speaking of Chevy, Scream Factory did put out. Um, that's right, Johnny Darko. Everybody drop a like. Uh, thank you, Nike Boy J. You're awesome. Um, Scream Factory did put out um, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Have you seen oh, really? that, Brandon? I can't remember if I've seen that or not. That was a that was a 90s movie, right? 1991. Yeah, Chevy, okay. Chevy Chase. I feel like I had to have seen that, but I don't remember a damn thing about it if I have. I think it's remarkable. Um, so Chevy Chase wanted to make this book that he loved. Mm-hmm. And Memoirs of Invisible Man is a pl- is like a take on the Invisible Man. Uh, but it's a love story. It's a drama. The villain of the film is Sam Neill, which John Carpenter loved working with Sam Neill. He talked about how professional Sam was and how good of an actor he thought he was. So that's why ultimately we would see him work again with Sam for In the Mouth of Madness, which yeah. a lot of people consider John's best film of the decade. I personally agree with that. But I think uh, Memoirs is up there, too. I mean, when you really look at John's work from the 90s, uh, people will give him a, some shit over the 90s. I actually think he's done some great stuff. Like, I love Me- in, in the Mouth of Madness. Then I would say Vampires. I'm a diehard Vampires fan. Vampires is great. With James Woods. James yes. oh, Woods yeah. was born for that movie. Fantastic. And then I would and then I would go Memoirs. I really would. I think Memoirs is damn good. And it has some of the craziest special effects. And, it's uh, not really a comedy, is it? It's sort of like a drama. It's a drama, but it's got those Chevy quips. Like it's mm-hmm. still funny. Like if I could set up memoirs of Invisible Man for you, for the, you in the chat a little bit. So Chevy works for this big company, and he makes a lot of money. He does well, um, and there's this big seminar thing he has to go to. Uh, and at the seminar, it's this big science thing with this new technology and new experimentation stuff. Well, che- there's this Chevy's like leaves the he leaves the conference room and to go upstairs and go to the bathroom and just walk around. And he goes into this room where these scientists are all on this. Com- they're on these classic looking computer screens and there's everything going on. And Chevy asks one of the guys where the bathroom is. Well, this guy goes, oh, it's right over there. And he hits his coffee cup coffee starts spraying on all these computer screens and these computer boards and the whole room starts freaking out and electricity and it looks like it's going to explode and it sends off this chemical that causes half of the building to literally disappear and they show this amazing shot of this skyscraper building where part of it is invisible and the parts of the building that got affected that caused Chevy which he was in that caused him to literally become invisible. And what they do that's so great in this movie, and this is the only thing I want to, I don't want to spoil too much about memoirs. They really put you behind the eyes of really how terrifying it would be if you genuinely were invisible and nobody could see you and how you really would have to watch out for your own personal safety because nobody can see you. Mm -hmm. Meaning people walking up and down in front of you, cars, traffic, things like that. And the gross part about being invisible, there's a shot of the film where Chevy's starving. He's got to eat. So he gets, he, he starts trying to eat. Then he looks in the mirror and he's seeing his food go down his digestive track, but he's invisible and the stomach acid's eating his food and it's gross. Yeah. It's an extremely ahead of its time movie that I think is brilliant. I mean, mm-hmm. genuine. It's and it's a big film. It was a very expensive film. The world wasn't. The world was not ready for Memoirs of an Invisible Man. It did not oh. do good. Chevy invested a lot of time and money into the project, and uh, this was John's return back into the big studios again. John has a very cyclical career. Make really good independent films. Get called up by the big studios. Make nothing but flops. Leave mm-hmm. big studios, go do independent films, kill it with Prince of Darkness and they live and then go back to the big studios again. Right. So he went back to Universal. I, be- I believe it was Universal. No, it was Warner Brothers. Warner mm-hmm. Brothers. He went to the biggest of the biggest of the biggest to do memoirs. And then um, memoirs didn't do good, but it was a very expensive film. Very expensive film. So I can't recommend mem- memoirs of an invisible man enough to people. 
on I, I watched his a Chevy Chase film, not realizing I was watching a John Carpenter film as well. And right. then when I knew that, it was so apparent I was watching a John Carpenter film. I'm gonna need to check this out. Does John Carpenter do the music for it by a chance or no? No, he he had way too much to deal with. There, there's a making of on YouTube. People should check out from the making of Memoirs of Invisible Men. It's so cool. It shows John Carpenter flying in on his plane because he was a pilot at the time, mm-hmm. and he literally would drive to set on his plane. He had a he had a he had his own plane, and you just see this like little helicopter. He's this little. He was a helicopter pilot, and you just see this helicopter pull up on set, <laughs> and it's just John getting out of it, and he's like, "All right, let's go. Let's get ready to go." Sell a cigarette in his hand, I'm sure. Dude, I mean, he was making one of the biggest films in the world at the time. I mean, memoirs was, and it's crazy, Brandon. Nobody, the app, the the, the general public have never heard of this film, but it was yeah. literally one of the biggest films of the year in terms of cost. I mean, it was a monster film. So, um, yeah, I, I I just urge everybody, please check out Memoirs of Invisible Man. It's one of my all time favorites, and Sam Neill it just kills it as the villain. Sam Neill is a very good bad guy. Mm-hmm. As much as we love him in Jurassic Park, like he's a damn good bad guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm super. My interest is peaked. I really need to see this movie now. 